one lab that we'll be doing in the class is using a resonance tube to measure the speed of sound. I can show you that set up really quickly. Uh, we'll, we'll start with a tuning fork and then a tube filled with water and then um, turns out we can adjust the level of the water by raising or lowering this water reservoir. And what we find will happen is there'll be certain locations where the volume changes a little bit. So let me show that. I'm going to hit this and put the tuning fork over top of the resonance tube here. So hopefully you noticed there, there was a specific moment where the, uh, the sound became louder. And if you decrease the water level even further, we'll hear it again. There it was again. I'll try to make it happen louder again in case you missed it the first time. I'll, I'll raise the water level back up. Okay. So we've seen here, and you will measure in the lab, several locations where it does this. What's happening here is I'm trying to get a good standing wave going in this resonance tube. The, um, uh, for, for, for a tube that has one end closed and one end open, ideally you would like the open end to be an antinode and the um, closed end to be a node. It's like these, uh, these pictures here. If you, have a, if you have a tube of a certain length, you can fit one quarter of a wavelength in exactly, or if the tube is a little bit longer, you can fit in three quarters of a wave. That's the rule for um, tubes that are closed at one end and open at another end. You want to be able to fit an odd number of quarter wavelengths in there. So we'll be doing that. Uh, the, these tuning forks are a thousand hertz. So um, by, through, the, through this bit of experimentation, we can figure out um, how big half a wave is, the distance between those two loud spots, and then we can use it to determine the speed of sound. Um, However, for my video demonstration purposes here, I would rather do this uh, in a little bit more scaled up fashion. So we have the, uh, the cardboard resonance tube out here, which can demonstrate the same thing a little bit more dramatically. It's the exact same effect. I'm going to have a tube that's open on one end, so you can, you can completely put your hand in it, and it's closed on the other end. And we can adjust the length by... Uh, by pulling this uh, inner tube insert in and out. All right. So the way I'm going to show this off is with a, a speaker. Instead of using a tuning fork, I'm going to use a big old speaker here. And my um, function generator is set at 440 hertz. This is a concert A. And um, you'll notice I can just turn it on. And I can also make it louder by messing with the amplitude knob of this function generator. But that's not what I'm going to, I'm not going to mess with this any further once we start the demo. I'm going to do the exact same thing did with the water tube over here. I'm going to adjust the length of the tube, and there will be certain spots where, um, you know, if the, if the tube is just the right length, you get constructive and destructive interference just the way you're supposed to, and a, a standing wave of maximum amplitude is set up. And we'll be able to hear that. So uh, I don't really care how long this tube is. All I care is how far do you have to lengthen it to go between one loud position and the next? Because the difference between those will give me half a wavelength. Um, I'm messing with a frequency here of 440 hertz. Uh, we will find out what the wavelength is. And hopefully, even though this is a really quick and crude measurement, we can get a speed of sound similar to what we expect. So what I'll do is I'll put the, um, so make sure the amplitude's okay, I'll put the speaker on one end and then mess with the other end. You can hear as I move this in and out, there will be some loud places and some quiet places. So let me do that. So I'm not touching the amplitude knob anymore, just um, adjusting the length of the tube. Now it's, it's not as loud.
So um, I stretched out this tube from, you know, 41 centimeters exposed to 80 centimeters exposed. So um, okay, there's 39 centimeters of difference in the two positions. That means that one half of one wavelength. half a wavelength, so uh, we, uh, the wavelength is double this, so 39 doubled is 78. So 78 centimeters is 0.78 meters. Okay. Uh, so just to see if we get something reasonable here, I can make an estimate of the speed of sound. Um, if you take 440 hertz times 0.78 meters, if you uh, go through your calculator and you uh, put those numbers in, it's 343.2 meters per second. And depending on room temperature, we usually take the speed of sound to be either 343 meters a second or 344. So um, we, we came actually within one meter per second of uh, all of the accepted values for the speed of sound here. And all it took was just a quick measurement with a, a cardboard tube. I mean, the, the fancy part is knowing that I was playing exactly 440 hertz from here, but by, by checking the, um, the difference in the tube lengths where you have a good standing wave set up, we can figure out the wavelength, we know the frequency, and you can get the speed of sound. You'll be doing the exact same thing in the lab with the, the water tube. You just measure the, the separation between the loud spots, you get the wavelength from that.